excited to have you all here um, joining us to learn about Lobbying 101. So, and we're mostly excited about having you guys join us in November at annual meeting of the Quaker Public Policy Institute. Hi, my name is Maya Zwirling. I'm the national field organizer at FCNL, and I work with people across the United States to learn how to talk to members of Congress, how to go into lobby visits, and do that strategically and with relationship building in mind. Yeah, and I'm Julia. I am uh, the strategy assistant here at FCNL, and a huge chunk of my job is helping you guys schedule your visits for this lobby day in November. Um, so I will be getting in touch with you all um, all throughout the next six weeks um, until you all join us here on Capitol Hill to make sure you have everything prepared. Great. So we're here just to give you a little introduction of what what should you expect when you come to DC? There will be a lot more information to come, but we hope that this will just give you a little confidence as you begin to think about what comes in November. So first, let's talk about what is lobbying. Lobbying is asking a member of Congress to do something, to take some action. The way I often think about it is in high school when I would ask my professor for an extension because I was sick. That was talking to them about something that I cared about, that I needed, that I wanted, telling them, sharing with them why I cared about it and trying to get them to give me what I wanted. So lobbying is just a conversation. It's easy and it's really fun. Um, so how, does F, how do FCNL staff lobby? We lobby by listening and with relationship buildings at the forefront. And Julia will talk in a minute about what does that look like? How, what is that exactly? Um, the question that I often get is, so FCNL paid staff lobby, what do we do as constituents, as people across the country? And you guys lobby too. You have relationships with the members of Congress that represent you, that are in structures of government to literally represent you in Washington. So all it really is, is a conversation. Um, yeah, so there's three important things to know um, about your lobby visit, which first, the most important thing to know is that you don't have to be an expert. You know, FCNL staff go in as experts um, on a particular issue and bring their knowledge and experience. When you're going in to a lobby visit, your expertise is your constituency. It's how this issue affects you and your community um, and why you believe that your congressman to best represent you uh, should do what you're asking them to do. Um, and so when you're in a lobby visit, you might be talking to the member of Congress, um, him or herself, or you could be talking to a member of their staff. Um, and both are great. It's really important to connect with uh, members of Congress on a one-on-one -on -one level and kind of uh, g gain an understanding of how you all are in part of the same community. And um, But it's also really important to communicate with their staff. Their staff are experts on these issues. Uh, and in uh, November, a lot of you will be meeting with a lot of staff who are there to help inform you um, about the member of Congress's view, but also help inform the member of Congress. So your, uh, your ask will have a great effect on them and be communicated back to your member of Congress, even if you don't necessarily meet one-on-one -on -one with them. Um, so both are great and uh, valuable types of lobbying. Um, so, and then finally, uh, you don't have to lobby alone. And in DC, you won't be lobbying alone. Um, so hopefully we'll have somebody from every state here uh, in November, fingers crossed. Um, but if you're the only person from your state, we'll definitely make sure that FCNL staff uh, go along with you and lobby with you. Um, if you're the only person from your congressional district, which is a lot more likely, um, we will make sure that either a staff person goes with you or someone else from your state goes along with you. Um, you know, you uh, might, there not, might not be someone who shares residence with you in a certain lobby, in a certain district, but there might be somebody who goes to school in your district, who um, goes to church in your district, who just has friends or family who live there and is part of your district's community, even if they don't necessarily have constituency there and can be a supporting voice in your, uh, lobby visit, even though your voice uh, is the most important since you are the voter. Um, 
So yeah, Maya's gonna tell you a little bit about kind of the step-by-step -step process of how this lobby visit goes down. You'll be planning this out with other people from your state um, on Thursday when you're in DC. But um, yeah, she has a kind of, is gonna give you a rundown on fr what Friday is going to look like when you're going to the office, so. Yeah. And so the first thing that you'll do, and this will actually happen before Friday, is you or someone in your delegation will set up a lobby visit, will set up a meeting with the office. And Julia here does all of that stuff, works with all of you all to do that. So she, she's around to help you. Um, for those who are lobbying alone in congressional districts, she will be in contact in mid-October to talk to you about what that looks like. So. You're in Capitol Hill, you're here in November. What does your Friday look like? So the first thing you need to know is that FCNL is right next to Capitol Hill. Actually right out this window right here, we're looking at the Senate Hart Building, which is one of the congressional office buildings that some of you may be lobbying in. So you, uh, you'll get to your office about 20 minutes beforehand. You'll have a little bit of a walk just to get there. And then, um, the staff member or uh, the staff member who works for the member of Congress, at, well, both of them do. Um, so the staff member will meet you and you will go into a room either with the member of Congress or just with that staff member. Uh, they'll introduce themselves, they'll tell you a, a little bit about what they work on, and then you'll talk to them about um, who you are um, and who you're with. Uh, then you'll have an opportunity to share your ask. What is it that you are there to talk about? Then you will engage in a little dialogue of why, why do you care about this issue? How does your personal story and, and the things that you're invested in and the things that you care about relate to why you were here on Capitol Hill to talk to them? Uh, so then you'll engage in dialogue, ask questions, they'll ask you questions. Again, it's really just a conversation, it's easy. And then you'll say goodbye, and then you'll have the opportunity to do follow-up via email or um, other types of follow-up that we'll talk about at the lobby day. And just so you know, on, on that Thursday when you're talking to your, uh, your delegations about what your lobby visit will look like, you'll actually get a lobby visit roadmap that will say this step-by-step, -step, and it will give you a really clear idea of all the things that I just shared with you in even more detail. Um, so we're going to uh, answer a few more questions that people may have. We have a Q&A set up on this Google Hangout, so you can type in your questions if you have them. Otherwise, we have a couple kind of uh, couple questions that people sent in beforehand. Um, and yeah, the first, of course, is what are we lobbying on? Um, and I can tell you all about it. Uh, this November, we you all know we're lobbying on peace building more broadly, and you're going to learn all about peace building on Thursday um, from our lobbyists and from experts uh, from around Washington, D.C. Um, but you are specifically going to be talking to your member of Congress and your senators about the Atrocities Prevention Board, which is um, a, uh, a organization in Congress, uh, or not in Congress, in D.C. Uh, within the uh, Obama administration that President Obama created via executive order in 2012, um, which is great. It does great work. It helps, uh, it brings people from all over the government together to actually talk about um, where they're seeing uh, potential for mass atrocities developing in the long term and what we can do right now to help prevent those mass atrocities from happening. Uh, so this is really important work and it's work that wasn't being done before. Um, and they it brings together people from the State Department, from the Department of Defense, uh, from the Treasury, from the uh, delegation to the UN, um, all sorts of different people uh, who who aren't necessarily in communication about this uh, in their day, and it's actually led by someone from the State Department. So it's civilian led, which means that it's um, people who are looking towards peace as their primary objective instead of looking towards war um, as their purpose. So uh, looking beyond uh, 
providing weapons to ward off any potential conflicts, which is incredible news for uh, for all of us who are hopeful for a stronger, more peaceful world. Um, but as I said, this was actually established by executive order. And what that means is that in, uh, in 2017, when we have a new president in office, it could go away. Um, and that's bad news. So the way to prevent that from happening, the way from, to prevent a future uh, president from ending the Atrocities Prevention Board is establishing it permanently through Congress. And that's uh, what we will be asking our members of Congress to do. Um, and so, yeah, um, another question that we um, uh, have is uh, basically, uh, if, uh, sorry, um, is what should we wear? Maya, what do you wear to your log visits? Yeah, this is one of my favorite questions because it seems so simple, but it's really not. It, it really is uh, a little confusing if you've never been to Washington. So when I go to lobby visits, I often try and match what I expect my members of Congress or their staff to be wearing. Business casual jackets like this, kind of Kind of what we're wearing right now is a good example. You want to look professional, but you certainly don't have to wear a tux. Um, the idea is just to, to blend in as much that we can have a conversation that's focused on what we're saying and that's not distracted by our clothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then another question that we get a lot, Maya, is should we expect? So we're going to be there from November uh, 12th through uh, 15th. So on November 16th, is the Atrocities Prevention Board going to be permanently authorized or what's yeah. going to happen? <laughs> well, if a miracle happens, yes, the next day it'll happen. <laughs> Unfortunately, Congress doesn't work quite that fast. But what we expect is after you have a conversation with your member of Congress, hopefully they'll say that they'll look into co-sponsoring this bill and then they will talk to others about co-sponsor co-sponsorship, they will consider, and co-sponsorship basically means I'm putting my name on voting and supporting this bill by the time it comes to the floor, if it does. So it's kind of putting their check mark on the bill. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll get all these members to co-sponsor this really important legislation, so much so that the leaders of our House and Senate see that we need to move it forward. And uh, the other part that I'll say about that is um, one of the reasons that we're so excited about this bill is that it does, and it does, and it will have, uh, uh, it, it does, and it will have both Republican and Democratic support, and that's really important in terms of how and if bills move. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add to that? Um, no, I would just say that uh, other than that, follow-up is really key in this point. Their members of Congress are working on tons of different issues and their staff are hearing from constituents on a lot of different things. So once you go home, uh, that's not the end of your lobbying. Even though your lobby visit is a really important catalyst to getting this moving, um, equally important is continuing to build this relationship with your member of Congress so that we can be sure that this gets through and that this actually passes. Yeah. And that's how all of the big initiatives work that we work on. We don't have people just lobby once. That's not where our the strength of our work comes from. It comes from people who are on Capitol Hill, who are talking to their members of Congress at home and really pushing for the world we seek. Yeah. Great. Well, we don't seem to have any other questions. Um, so we'll wrap it up. I'll just uh, let you know that this is far from the only lobby training that you're going to get. We're going to be having uh, many more discussions about this when you're here in DC. Uh, additionally, there's going to be a conference call in mid-October that you'll be getting an email about soon that's talking uh, with our lead lobbyist, uh, Theo Sither, uh, on about the Atrocities Prevention Board. He can give you all of the details. He'll remember all of the organizations that are part of the Atrocities Prevention Board. Um, and you'll be able to feel really confident in that you have the basic knowledge that you need. Uh, but also, as always, you don't really need to be an expert. You just need to know, know your ask um, and know why it impacts you and your community. So I hope you guys are getting excited.
Yeah. I see all the time the power that are that, that those who are connected with FCNL across the country have in Washington from hundreds or thousands of miles away. So we're so excited for you to come here and we're so excited to get a voice for peace and for pivoting to peace on Capitol Hill. So hope you're excited for November. Thanks. Bye guys. Bye.